welcome to the 75th Annual Meeting of Kentucky Electric Cooperatives, your statewide association, proud to serve the reliable, resilient, responsive electric co-op program of Kentucky. From the beginning, since the ceremonial burial of an old kerosene lamp at the base of the first electric co-op pole in Kentucky, co-ops have responded to the needs of their members. And the people of Kentucky are interested in rural electrification. You want the farmers, the men and women who live in the country, to have light and heat and power and conveniences that have been enjoyed for all these years by their more fortunate city neighbors. At that time, 97% of Kentucky farms did not have electricity. But when local Kentuckians, long ignored by private power companies, got together to form cooperatives backed by REA loans. The co-ops began to roll. The first began at Henderson, and from there new co-ops spread out to the east and west and south. The energy and achievements of the co-ops in those first 10 years were remarkable. But those burgeoning co-ops still faced challenges and threats, especially as private power companies became increasingly concerned with co-op success. The co-ops came to realize that they were stronger together, and they could more efficiently serve their members if they strategically pooled their resources for certain tasks. Two and a half months after this photo was taken of the first annual meeting of the Kentucky Rural Electric Cooperative Corporation in June 1947, the board voted to hire a small statewide association staff to be led by the founding manager of Fleming Mason RECC, the visionary J.K. Smith. And he had a long list, more than 40 items to start, of statewide support services. Among them was put out a publication, legislation, safety program, and one very controversial issue involved in it was uh, to provide uh, uh, the acquisition of materials and resell them to the co-ops. Every priority identified by J.K. Smith and that original board came to life. Their legacy is a statewide association responsive to its members with support advocacy, and education, and specific objectives defined by meeting the challenges of each generation. What began as a service department that included meter and transformer repair grew into transformer manufacturing in 1957 after a major supplier under pressure from private power companies cut ties with co-ops. Over the next 58 years, statewide would manufacture some 2 million transformers and give birth to United Utility Supply Cooperative, today one of the leading material supply organizations in the country, serving member cooperatives in 17 states. The safety and job training provided by the statewide association also has roots that extend to the first year of the Kentucky Rural Electric Cooperative Corporation. Though the inherent dangers of electricity remain the same regardless of the year, every year brings a better understanding, methods, equipment, and systems to improve safety. The shared commitment to safety by member co-ops is reflected in the dedication to safety training by the statewide team, providing quality resources to both experienced linemen and basic skills training to those coming up the ranks, mutual aid support, special certifications and training, equipment testing, live line work, and rescue skills. Demonstrated by today's safety and loss prevention team, the statewide association is more committed today than ever to a safety culture. Abundant and cheap power means profitable and expanded business and industry in Kentucky. Abundant and cheap power means thousands of jobs at higher wages for Kentucky labor. Let me make this unmistakably clear. Abundant and cheap power is not a threat to our free enterprise system. It is the best insurance policy you can buy. 
From the start, co-ops identify the need to speak up for themselves. Responsive to that need, Kentucky Electric Co-op News launched in April 1948 to educate consumers, the public, and officials about the co-op program. Statewide messaging efforts highlight the opportunities and improvements made possible by co-op electric service and advocate for co-op interests. It was the beginning of a still uninterrupted monthly publication that connects with co-op consumer members. Rebranded as Rural Kentuckian Magazine in 1951 and Kentucky Living in 1989 a direct pipeline to consumer members and policymakers. Now part of a comprehensive strategic communications effort responsive to the messaging challenges of today. For decades, perhaps the most visible statewide outreach was the annual meeting and electric farm show caravan. Part carnival, trade show, and business meeting, each stop on the circuit drawing thousands of people with entertainment, attendance prizes, contests from cake baking to tractor driving, and the more than 40 year tradition of beauty pageants with member co-ops crowning a queen to compete in the Miss Kentucky Rural Electric Beauty Pageant in Louisville. The meetings showcase the modern appliances and latest electrical devices for home and farm. Here in another area are some of the people who own and run America's rural electric systems. One thing that has never changed is the commitment to co-op democratic values. Members engage to get the latest updates on co-op operations and preserve the one member, one vote standard, electing directors to represent member interests and guide co-op management. The Buckets and Bulbs annual meeting statewide support started under J.K. Smith continues. Responsive to the needs and opportunities of each generation, Association outreach takes many forms, from the youth tour program over the last 50 years to a variety of community and business engagement over the years. At the heart of every development, the support of member co-ops and their consumer members, like the launch of Consumers Credit RECC in 1954 to help members finance the purchase of appliances and electrical equipment. The REC School Equipment Loan Program four years later for high school home economics labs. In 1962, the All Electric Homes Corporation organized to provide research and development regarding rural housing, followed two years later by the Charter for the Rural Cooperatives Credit Union for co-op employees and family members. Our power is our people. If you take away the membership of a co-op, you take away the heartbeat of the co-op. If you take away the state association, you take away the heartbeat of the collective point of view. From the beginning, a principal role of the statewide association has been to represent the co-op program, embodying the combined voices of the individual electric systems, serving as the eyes and ears of rural electrification in meetings and hearings in Frankfurt and Washington, a critical need high on the list when the association began operations in 1948. In those days, we were getting uh, whipped every time we got in the legislature with anything because we weren't organized. Legislative and regulatory challenges to Kentucky co-ops have taken many different forms since 1935, requiring different strategies in different generations. In areas such as retail competition, territorial laws, and allowing co-ops to organize subsidiary business, the statewide association acts to both advocate for positive legislation and protect co-ops from potentially harmful bills, responsive to how potential new legislation could help co-op communities. Just as co-ops were key to legislation in the early 50s that helped bring telephone service to rural Kentucky, co-ops now advocate for broadband service in underserved areas. Some thought rural power impractical. Some said it couldn't work, wouldn't pay. But today, member-owned, member-operated electric cooperatives have made it work, have made it pay, a tribute to the spirit of a determined people. This was and is free enterprise, free enterprise in its finest form. This was the work of neighbors joining with neighbors, securing what they felt was their right, 
a better standard of living. This was democracy. Democracy in the cornfields, as some have called it. The legendary land of Kentucky hasn't changed. The bluegrass farms and fences and homes, only the lines of power are new to the familiar scene. Lines bringing progress and a greater harvest of good living along their way. Thank you.